All right, here I have a chicken. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys through the process of making a chicken dinner with all the fixings, a chicken soup, um, bone broth, which is different than broth, and then bone meal. And so what I'm doing right now is just giving it a little rinse and pulling out the stuff that's inside the chicken. And hopefully you can see that. So what I like to do with birds, and I know this is gross, but you only have to do it one time, is you gently stick your finger in there and there's little things and you just loosen them up. And the reason why I'm detaching the skin from the chicken is because I'm gonna put seasonings and butter in there on the top of the bird. So then that way, make sure they didn't put anything else up in the cavities. So I'm gonna stuff butter and seasonings up underneath the skin here. And then that way it'll keep your um, chicken nice and moist and tender for your meal. And I am not going to waste the pieces that um, you can't see that. The pieces that go inside, that come from inside the bird, like the liver and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dice them up really fine. And I'm just going to put them into that. I'm not going to do the neck. I'm sorry. Can't do it. You could if you want. But I'm just gonna dice it up really small. And it'll help make some good broth. I am not putting broth into this chicken. It's gonna make its own broth. Um, I'm going to add some onions and some small potatoes and stuff and I will show you how that looks. All right, mashers are all done. Chicken looks beautiful. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting some of this broth out of here. Now remember, this is broth, which you can can, but bone broth has to cook for a couple of days to get the bone marrow out of the bone. So. All right, so let's see, hmm, maybe a little bit more. What I'm doing here is I'm going to make a chicken gravy by scratch. And I'm turning my temperature up to eight. You have to have it nice and warm to make the gravy. And so then what I do is I'll add a little bit of flour You don't want to add too much flour because once it starts boiling it'll thicken up and then you're going to use a whisk and kind of beat the side of the, the kettle so you can get all those clumps make sure you scrape around the side so that there isn't any flour and just kind of beat on the side and you're going to do that so that you make sure there are no clumps of flour there might be little bits of cilantro and whatnot from the stock that I pulled from the chicken. And that's just fine. That just makes gravy much, much better. And so what I'm looking for is a thicker consistency. Let me grab Sorry about that. So, that's not thick enough yet. It's still too watery. So I'm gonna wait just a few more minutes to give it time to heat up. Cause that might thicken it without having to add any more flour to it. And again, you just keep 
whisking it against the side of the kettle or pot. And it got a little bit thicker, but it's not to my liking. I'll show you. Uh, still a little bit too thin, a little thicker. So we'll add a little bit more flour. It's better to add a little less flour and have it thin because you can go back and thicken it. If you add too much flour, then it's going to taste too floury, doughy, and you don't want it that way. Scrape the sides and then keep whisking it to get the clumps out. And you want to move somewhat fast. Get a good workout for your arm. You get used to it if you haven't already done this before. Make sure that you're whisking the very bottom of your kettle or pot. Whoops, that was a dog. I don't know what happened. Everybody's good. Now let's see. That's better. You could go a little bit thicker if you want. It's up to you. Personal choice. You can add some more pepper in there if you want or just how it is. It should have enough flavoring from the chicken that it cooked in and all the vegetables. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the burner off and it's ready to go. Give it one more good stir. Mm -mm -mm. Mashed potatoes, homemade gravy from the drippings of this beautiful chicken that we cooked. Now stay with me. Remember, I told you that we're gonna make a soup. This is the dinner. I'll plate it up and show you a picture. And then we're gonna make a soup, <clears throat> strain the bones out, and then after that, we're going to make bone broth with the bones off of this chicken. And then after that, we're going to make bone meal that you can use for your plants. So please hang with me. If you've never seen this process done. Anyways, looks pretty good. You don't want to get it any more toasty than that. The, uh, oh yeah, that's right. The temperature, internal temperature. <clears throat> Sorry, I have one of these should be 180 and it went down because I've had it set out for 15 minutes but I had it at 220 let's see it's still going up but anyways it was at 180 that's what you wanted at because you don't want no pink chicken that's not good
Okay, so I have let this cook down so that the meat will fall off of the chicken. And so it's nice and tender. Everything's falling apart. I hope you can see that. It's just falling apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some of this liquid broth and put it into a bigger kettle because then I'm gonna take this over and strain it to get all the, or at least try to get the majority of the bits of bones out so that we can make a soup, a nice chicken soup from that same chicken that we roasted and made that delicious dinner. So that's what I'll do and I'll get all the liquid out of here and then I'll put it in, I'll put the kettle in the sink and um, I'll take you on the process. Okay, to continue making the soup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I put the big pot that I started putting the broth in, it's in the sink, just in case I spill any, and I put some strainers in there so that they won't fall in. They sit on the lip of the pot or the kettle. And I'm taking the chicken that I cooked down until it was nice and tender and falling off the bones and I'm going to scoop with my ladle into the strainers all the bits and pieces. And then I'm gonna have to sift through it and get the chicken pieces out and the vegetable pieces out and put them into the pot. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So it's a little bit of a process, but it's so worth it. It's yummy to make your homemade chicken soup. All right, so I've got almost all of it and I still have room in my strainer. So I'm gonna use hot pot pads because my kettle is um, warm. All the liquids falling down into my bigger kettle that's down on the bottom of the sink. I'm going to move that out of the way. And then I'm just going to sift through this, pulling out all the vegetables and all the chicken and putting it into the big kettle. And the bones I'm going to place into a bowl on the side. And I'll show you how to make bone broth after we're done with the soup. All right, so I got the bones out of the chicken. Here's the bones. Don't throw them away yet. Here's the wishbone. Make a wish. So I collected the bones in here. The vegetables and the meat are right here. I'm pouring them into the kettle that I have in the sink for my soup. Scrape it all in there. You don't want to miss any good bits. Okay. And with this kettle that I used to originally do my soup, I'm going to pour the bones in to make bone broth. I've got my soup. I'm going to put it back on the stove and add some vegetables, and I'll take you through the next process of the soup. All right, this is the kettle that was in the sink that I had the strainers in. And... This is what the soup looks like. You can eat it just like that, but I, because I wanna can some of it after we have a meal, I'm going to add some more diced up celery. And I shredded some carrot. So I'm gonna put some carrot in there. I'm gonna save some of these vegetables for my bone broth that I have over here. And <clears throat> you can put peas, you can put green beans, anything. I think I'm going to add some yellow wax beans in here and I'm gonna let it simmer on a low heat until or till the um, celery bits are tender to the bite. You can add some more pepper to it. I don't tend to add a lot of um, salt to my things if I can help it. There's should, there's lots of uh, 
flavoring in here because remember we cooked the chicken and um, spices and whatnot for the first meal. So this is the soup. We'll have soup for dinner tonight and I'll can the rest of it. I'll pressure can it. So now I'm gonna show you how I do the um, bone meal from the bones from the same chicken. Okay, so here's my bones that I skimmed out from the soup because we don't want bones in our soup. And I am going to make bone meal, the difference between broth and bone meal. Broth is the liquid from the flavorings of the product you're cooking. Bone meal is when you cook down for two days in water and you can add vegetables for two days to make bone meal. You just have it on a low simmer and all the good stuff that's in the middle of the bones comes out. So I'm gonna fill my little kettle. Yes, it's the same kettle that I originally had my chicken cooking down to get the meat tender enough to fall off. So there's still some goodies in here that'll just help intensify the bone meal. Or sorry, the bone broth. So I'm just gonna fill it up to that. You know, you can make more than what I'm making if you add more um, whole chickens. Um, you can collect your bones in um, freezer Ziploc bags until you have more. Um, it's just an awesome thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lid on it slanted and I'm gonna let it simmer for two days I'm gonna add the carrots and the celery, and that's it so far. Okay, now that I have the bones, I'll show you. With some added water, remember I'm, we're gonna let it simmer on low for two days to get all that goodness out of there. I'm going to go ahead and add some celery and some carrots in there. And that's it. You just let the bones simmer in the water. You can add um, some fresh ginger and some garlic and things like that, but I had already added that um, when I was preparing the chicken. So that will still kind of already be cooked into the bones. And that's that. You'll want to check it every once in a while and give it a little stir. Now back to our soup. Look at that delicious soup. So I'm just waiting for the celery to get soft and then we'll have a nice meal. How simple is that? So in a couple of days when the bone, whoops, bone broth is finished, I'll take you through the process of straining out the bones, and then we're going to use the bones for a whole nother project. Thank you for hanging with me. We've got this. All right, so I cooked the bones until they were nice and white. And the bigger bones, I used a mallet to break them down into a little bit smaller pieces. And then I use a magic bullet and put the bones in the magic bullet and grind them up. And so now you have bone meal and bone meal is used for planting such full gardens or house plants. You'll have to read on how much and what plants want it, but it's very nutritious for plants. So there you have it. And um, as far as the bone broth goes, you can put it in a jar 
and keep it in the refrigerator for up to a week and drink on it. It's healthy and good for your body. Um, if you have too much bone broth and you're not going to use it within a week, you can can it. Follow the guidelines for um, doing that. So it will need to be pressure canned. Bone broth does. Um, that'll be in the ball blue book on how long to do that in the pressure canner. So enjoy and hope that you found four ways that you can utilize a, chick a whole chicken. Um, we got to use all that we can. Thank you for joining me and have a beautiful day and give it a try. Don't waste anything. Don't forget to give the thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends. Bye.